Welcome to the Bella Vista Garden Program. I'm Jerry Horner, and today with me is Tony Okazi. Good morning. And she, he is a fellow member of the Bella Vista Garden Club and a fellow Benton County Master Gardener. And very knowledgeable about our subject today, which we're going to be talking about heat tolerant gardens. And with Tony living in Texas for a number of years, he knows about heat tolerant plants. It's a little warm there. It's a little warmer <laughs> there than here. So, but that's what we'll be talking okay. about today. And we will be um, also talking about upcoming events and what to do in your garden in August. There's a few things you need to do, but August isn't a good gardening month. It's just too hot. So. You have but, to get out really early in the morning. Right. But uh, uh, upcoming is the Benton County Fair. It's going to be Tuesday, August 6th to Saturday, August 10th. And it's a uh, free entry for everyone. Everybody can get yep. in free. I think they charge for the rides and things like that. Yes. You know. But uh, the Master Gardener is going to have a booth and uh, inside the fair and with a lot of gardening information. And that is also where you could sign up to um, become a Master Gardener. They'll take your name and give you the information, or you can go to the website uh, for the fair is bentoncountyfairar.org. So that's all the information on yep. the fair is and there. And that Master Gardener booth, uh, <laughs> you know, if you're having some problems in your garden, mm -hmm. take a picture of it with your phone, show it to them when you go. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can take a cutting of a damaged leaf or something, mm -hmm. that, that helps. Uh, but... Uh, uh, they're there to help you uh, right. with uh, even with uh, if you don't have a problem just with some plans some things that you're thinking about right. doing to make sure that before you go and spend your money and do all that labor that you haven't made a mistake yeah especially if you're new to the area that's right yeah and um, so it's all there for you and it's free we're there the whole time the fair is yep. going on exactly so there's always a master gardener yep. on duty there maybe yep. two or three who yep. knows so but today we're talking about heat tolerant gardens and heat tolerant plants and some plants take the heat better than others. Yes. And um, uh, some plants, even though they're heat tolerant, they still take a lot of water. So we're not True. talking basically about watering plants. We're talking about which ones just can take the heat if they have enough water. Right. So, And we have some photos of some plants uh, to show you that um, you could put in your garden. And most of these, most people have because they're pretty common. Uh, the first one is the wax begonia. Now that's a favorite of everyone and for pots and edgings. Oh, yeah. They come in white and pink and they have green leaves and they have brown leaves. Right. You know, some of them have brown Generally, leaves. Generally the uh, rule of thumb on, uh, on the begonias are the darker the leaf and the darker the flower, the more hours of sunlight mm -hmm. it'll take. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the pale green leaf with the light pink flower mm -hmm. Uh, can tolerate more shade, right? And that real deep burgundy leaf, and mm -hmm. with the red flower, is going to take the maximum amount of heat. Especially if it's an area surrounded by a lot of concrete, where a you rock, have, or you have rock, rock or brick walls, that mm -hmm. sort of thing, where you have radiant heat. Right. So keep that in mind when you're making your color choices on yeah. your begonias. And the next one is the periwinkle, and um, this comes in a couple different colors too. It's white, and there's some variations, pink and white, and and pink and kind of a purple color. Yeah. One, these are one word of caution on periwinkles though, mm -hmm. uh, Jerry, is that um, uh, it's best on, if you have a periwinkle bed, an annual periwinkle bed, mm -hmm. every summer they do handle the heat really well, they handle drought pretty good. Uh, I would not do periwinkles every single year. I'd do them about every third year. Well, mine have receded, so I have now yeah, a, they'll um, reseed to some a little degree. Um, area where I had periwinkles and now I have begonias, but the periwinkles have receded and there's a cascade of periwinkles coming out of my begonias. So I'm yeah, just letting them go. Yeah, yeah. those I, little know, volunteers if, will do pretty if good. If they want to volunteer and come up, I'm going to yeah, let them go. Yeah, they build up some kind of an enzyme in the soil and it takes a while for that. Yeah. You know, they, they look like they have a stunted growth in yeah. the years. So that's why I switched to the begonias there this go. year. There you go, exactly. But, but I still have those little periwinkles cascading off of the begonias. And the next one we have is the blue ageratum. And this is such a soft little thing. I used to love this when I was a little girl because I liked to touch it. It was so soft yes. and it's a sweet little plant. Yeah, I have a border of that right out by the street mm -hmm. right now. And it's a, it's a great it border, beautiful border plant, mm -hmm. trouble-free, 
and it pairs well with anything in the gold colors mm -hmm. of families. Or uh, yellows. Yeah, yeah, all yeah, your all yellows, yellows and golds yeah. in the center are really pretty. But it's a sweet little yep. plant. It's just yep. soft little blooms. It's really cute. Um, the next one we have is Cosmos. Now, Cosmos come in so many different colors and mixes the colors. Um, I love white uh, flowers because they just pop in the, in the garden. But there's uh, every kind of Cosmo you can think of and grow yeah. from seed, and they're real easy to grow. I've had the yellow one. I haven't had the white one, yeah. but uh, I'm, I'm leaning more. I'm adding more white to my landscape. Mm -hmm. Because I like going out at night and, oh, and, yeah. and, and white just flowers pops. just show up so just much pops. more in the garden yeah. at night. Now this one, you know when you do research for the show, you find a lot of new things. Yes. And um, this one is called Cupcakes and Saucers. And this is a Cosmo you can grow from seed. And this would just be a showstopper in yes. your garden. I'm telling you, it's so cute with the little background of a leaf and then the leaves in the middle. So... You I know, think I've seen that in botanical gardens. I've I've never mm -hmm. had it, but that is. Uh, but I think the seeds are readily available. If, if you haven't had it, I'd look it up. Get mm -hmm. the seeds. Yeah. You'll be happy with. Try it. new things. Yeah, yeah exactly. Try some new things. But I just thought that was a cute little thing. Then there's always the lantana, and that comes in yellow, red, purple, and it's a natural mosquito repellent. Yes. And uh, so you plant that around on your deck, you know. Uh, I mean, deer don't eat it. Deer don't eat it, and the mosquitoes might stay away. Yeah, I've away. never seen a bug problem on it. It's no. just, it's tough as uh, and it tough as nails. It handles drought really well. Mm -hmm. You don't have to keep it uh, watered uh, so much. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. And it's easy to grow. It's, that, it's, that's that's yeah. uh, that's a winner winner. Yeah. Then you have the penta, and the penta is pretty much the same as lantana. Mm -hmm. It's easy to grow from seed, and it comes in red, white, pink, and purple. So, and it blooms all summer. Yeah. You know, I yeah. don't know if it'll come back and reseed. I haven't had that um, happen. But it's. I uh, don't know. I've never had, it, I've never experienced it, but it. But it's, it, Penta is pretty, it's dependable. It really is. And then along with your zinnias, your zinnias are really dependable. And they can, you know, we have short ones, we have tall ones, we have every color you can think of. Different size blooms have big ones and little ones. Mm -hmm. and. Yeah. But zinnias are, are yeah. um, do your you know uh, experiment with different mm -hmm. varieties. Mm -hmm. the, there's just one word of caution on on zinnias. Um, if you're gonna when you water them, water them very early in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, so that that early morning sun will dry that leaf off right. quickly. They are susceptible to powdery mildew. Right, they do. And, their uh, leaves. So either water from underneath, mm -hmm. uh, or if you do have to water from uh, above. Uh, do it early mm -hmm. in the right. day. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's hard. I and mean, then with all the rain we've had this spring, oh, you know, yeah. most of the zinnias do have the powdery mildew. But yep. you know that you can't stop the rain, which nope. we don't want to do. That's right. So, and the next one we have is that portulaca, and that's called rock rose too. And it's a good ground cover. It just um, it just blooms and blooms, and it is in the succulent family. Yep. So it doesn't take a lot of water, and it it can come back. Year after year. It takes a lot of heat and a lot of dryness. Right, and it just yep. always just looks pretty with those little flowers just coming out of those little leaves. So yep. it's the variety just, of colors as well. Mm -hmm. it really does. Then um, we also have the uh, Celosia or Coxcomb. I, most people call it a Coxcomb. This is one variety, it's called the Flame, and it comes in red, orange, and yellow, and it will reseed. Coxcombs have a lot of seeds. Yeah, I noticed you got a picture of it in, in yellow. Yeah. Normally you see it in red. Right, normally. Uh, but I, I like that, uh, that yellow, yellow that it, you it found, Jerry. That's it makes pretty. a nice statement yeah, in the garden. Nice. Yep. Now, my mother used to grow the coxcomb that was more like the coxcomb look. You know, it's a, like a fan bloom. Oh. And she would dry them and put them on the mantle in the wintertime because they match the color of the flowers on the draperies. So we had, we had coxcomb always in the wintertime on the mantle to match our drapery colors. And so that was just a memory from coxcomb from years ago, but those seeds are just like little pepper seeds, uh, oh, pepper, and okay. then seeds just fall out all over, so they do reseed. And there's other annuals that, um, that um, would take the heat too. You know, we got the sunflowers right here. There's another example right. of ones that yep. really sunflowers. take the heat. In every size imaginable. Right. And uh, then the, the birds love those seeds after the yeah. flowers bloom. And then you have uh, caladiums and geraniums. And I'm adding more and more caladiums to my beds and, you know, in pots. And they just, they just take that heat Big variety and of leaf so colors. And so many varieties, and the Big colors variety. are just beautiful, and they just 
they really, really show. And you can you can dig the tubers up in the fall when you know mm -hmm. once we've had a, a freeze. You can dig those tubers up, pack them in uh, mm -hmm. peat moss and newspaper, mm -hmm. and bring them back in the spring and replant them. Well, I plant mine in pots mostly. Okay. And then I just take the pot in the garage. I have a, a boiler, so my garage doesn't get below 50. Right. But um, just take the pot. I just take the pot just in. Move the pots in. And then I don't water them. I don't touch them all no, winter. Just leave them alone. Take them out in the winter. Take the them spring. out in the spring. They're easy if you got yep, the storage room. Too. You know, to pull them in. Um, and then um, we also have geraniums, and right. geraniums can take the heat. Yeah. And they they don't need a whole lot of water. And sometimes they'll. Yeah. Droop a little bit, but not much. They're, they're pretty they're, drought When they're tolerant. in pots, they like to be fed mm -hmm. regularly. Right. Anything that blooms a lot needs yep. needs some feeding, so yep. you have to feed your annuals. So, and then uh, on perennials, we have um, what do we the penstemon or digitalis, mm -hmm. and there's several varieties of that. It's got a pretty little sweet bloom, and the foliage always looks good. It's always upright, and um, I have some with reddish foliage. It's called Husker Red. And the foliage is, has a red tint to it, so it, it, it looks good with some green, you know, um, surrounding plants. So, okay. then there's a digitalis too. I just found this one. This is digitalis obscura, our Spanish foxglove, and it has a pretty little colored bloom. I haven't seen the the digitalis in that color. It's just a pink and yellow combination. So it's it's a cute little uh, little plant. That's why it pays so. to go to these catalogs. Right. And find these different and cultivars do some research, and varieties research. and do a little research, make sure they match up with our hardiness zone. Mm -hmm. Right. And and uh, because I would dare say if you showed this picture to the average garden club member or Benton County Master Gardener, they've never seen this color. No, uh -uh, I, I probably doubt not. If you, it would be two people that have seen this color. Mm -hmm. uh, you and know, you can Google usually it. Usually when you think of fox love, you, you don't think in these terms no. and that subtleness. So that that's why uh, uh, research you know, does. Yeah. Don't does don't be afraid to try new and different and things because you'll you may have a superstar in your garden. Right. And, you know. A new one, new plant new, that yeah, no one's absolutely. seen before. But the foxglove, the normal foxglove, um, the leaves just get so bug eaten and I, I don't think there's anything you can do to avoid that. Um, you know, you don't want to spray them too much. But no. normally foxgloves the, the leaves just don't look as pristine as, as a lot of plants, so I avoid the foxgloves themselves. If, if, yeah, if they're down in a uh, uh, in a perennial garden mm -hmm. and they have some other plants around them mm -hmm. for the bottom, because the, then the flower is going to be up above mm -hmm. most yeah. of the other plants. But they're not on a standalone plant. The no, foxglove no, not is not as a standalone. Not as attractive. Okay, and um, let's see what's we have next is. Um, this is called blanket flower. Now they're huge and they're beautiful. Um, they come in red and orange and yellow in combinations. This was is yellow and orange, so that would really show up in the garden. And uh, but the blanket flower um, is uh, is something that comes back every year, and, and you just you know do some re research on that. You can Google uh, plant, and then if you go to images. On Google, you find just hundreds and hundreds of different images, and sometimes those images will actually take you to a nursery. If you click yeah. on them, they'll take you to a nursery yeah. where you can buy these plants. Is that a tuber type plant? No, I think it's just a, a perennial. Just yeah. a has root it system. Has, it has a root. It has a root system. Okay. Yeah. And the next one we have is, of course, yeah, the coreopsis. coreopsis. That's yeah. the standby. Yes. Yeah, and, um, it likes Bella Vista. It does. <laughs> and there's so many native Coreopsis, too, that just bloom everywhere. But they come in red, orange, and pink, and they're just um, in combinations, too, sometimes. I just keep them deadheaded, and they just they keep just producing keep like blooming crazy. blooming all yeah. summer. So um, they're, a good they're a good plant to, to have. The next one we have is the Laetrus, the Blazing Star. And um, this one is... Um, is wonderful for the butterflies and bees. They just love this, and it it just comes back every year, and it just kind of grows in a clump and, and gets larger and larger. So, um, the uh, Laetrus is a, is a nice plant to have. It makes a a good statement in your yard, and it gets about two foot tall, I guess, something like that. That's a nice height. Yeah, it's a good height for the middle yeah. of your border, middle yep. of your plants. So, and now you also have other. Um, other um, perennials 
you know, that can take the heat too. Right. So um, your oak leaf, well, that's a shrub. Yeah. Oak leaf hydrangea, your butterfly bush, those are shrubs. And then we also have the viburnum uh, is a shrub that is, can take the heat too. And that is um, a lot of varieties. The one I have is Summer Snowflake, and it blooms mm. uh, cluster, um, pretty heavy blooming in the spring, and then periodically through the summer, it'll yeah. s it'll shoot out some yeah, bloom. I, what, I, what I do with mine is I, after I get that big flush of blooms in the mm -hmm. spring, I just, uh, um, I don't, I deadhead it, but I deadhead it by doing a buzz cut, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and because uh, it has so many blooms. There's hundreds mm -hmm. of blooms. Yeah. So the best way is just take some shears and just give yeah. it a light, just right below the bloom mm -hmm. head, and give it a buzz cut. Give it a nice feeding of, with a fertilizer, you know, with a high middle number on it, mm -hmm. and it'll come back, and you'll get yeah, another get big bloom. flush of mm -hmm. blooms all, pretty much all summer. Yeah, they just keep popping yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. And they handle drought well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the butterfly uh, butterfly bush is another one that's really oh, yeah. got to have a butterfly. And they're coming different sizes, so many yeah. different sizes. Yeah, I, have, uh, I have a couple that uh, don't get over two feet tall, mm -hmm. and then I've got one that'll get six or seven or eight foot tall mm -hmm. that I have to keep cutting to yeah. scale. But yeah. if it has wings, it comes to it, and it handles the heat right. really well. Yeah, yeah the bees and yeah. butterflies bees love it. Bees and butterflies and yeah. moths and every, everything you can think of, they love that plant. Yeah. So there's, and you have to, you know, think about when you plant something, how it, big it's going to get in your garden. Yep. So, and yeah. they're white and lilac and then a deep purple. Mm -hmm. Those deep purple ones really, oh, you get, um, uh, they really make an impact in the garden. Mm -hmm. And then we have the next one we have is the cat mint, our nepeta. And this is called cat's pajamas. Now this blooms... Um, from the base to the top, it gets like 12 to 14 inches tall and 18 to 20 inches wide, so it's wider than it's tall usually. And um, it just has a lot of blooms that's on a, it. That's a garden star right there. Mm -hmm. It comes in blue, purple, white, pink, yellow. And there's also one called Walker's Low that uh, is a little bit shorter. Um, but uh, that's and a real popular one. That one's in gravel there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Looks like it's almost yeah, it's gravel. Out there in yeah. gravel in, in the hot sun. Yeah, takes the heat. And it's uh, that's a showstopper. But the cat the cat mint is is a good addition, and uh, you can kind of control, I guess, the size of it if you don't want it that wide. You can in the spring, you know, yeah. dig it, um, separate a little bit, sure. and reduce the size, yeah. and share it with someone else. Exactly right. So, okay, and then of course the yucca. That's that's. Um, that's the how. That's the star of yeah. heat tolerance. Well, can, I have never seen now, a yucca. Now back to Texas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's. Well, but you it's, get that nice big gorgeous white spike sticking up. Oh it's, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. A pretty thing. And I haven't seen any colors other than white. No. I think that it always blooms white. white. Yeah. But then you can have. Um, uh, you can have. Uh, leaves that are either all green or variegated. You know, there's different yep. um, leaf uh, colors. So. Yep. But any of your tropicals will take the heat. You know, you have your um, your um, bougainvillea vines, yeah. and you have other yeah. vines that yeah. are yeah. Uh, well, you know, a couple of the vi the vines I think that um, we talked about mm -hmm. earlier uh, today was that firecracker honeysuckle. Mm -hmm. You know, and the hummingbirds love that yeah. thing. Yeah. Butterflies do too, and the um, that um, trumpet cross vine with that mm -hmm. coral colored flower yeah. handles the heat really, really well. There's another uh, vine. Yeah. Uh, but then some shrub, you know, some shrubby type things like hardy hibiscus. Mm -hmm. Oh, you yeah. Know, yeah. They can where take you get the those heat. big dish sized flowers and mm -hmm. it, it comes back year after year. You're going to have a plant that's about Oh, three to four three foot, foot tall. Three foot tall, yeah, about three and foot. That range. Eight, four foot, yeah. Uh, your black eyed Susans, which this year, if you look around, oh, they're beautiful Bella Vista, this year. They're, they're spectacular yeah. no matter where you go. Yeah. Uh, if you like butterflies, bee bomb. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and bee bomb. bees. The only uh, thing you have to worry about is bee bomb is controlling it. Sometimes it can yeah, get out, it, of, uh, out of the space the, you want it in. You, you have you to. Wanna, you want to put it in a, in a bed. That because um, it's gonna a small bed because mm -hmm. it's gonna if it's a large bed it's gonna take over the mm -hmm. whole bed right mm -hmm. you know eventually yeah uh, it's, all it's, all underground but yeah uh, in a, a smaller 
uh, size bed mm -hmm. and it fills it, you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of activity in, oh, yeah. in bees and the bees and butterflies. Sort of yeah. Um, so asters bloom in August also. Mm -hmm. You get beautiful blue flowers in August. Um, oh, asters come in a lot of different colors. Too. A lot of different colors. A lot of different, different well. shapes. Uh, multiple bloom, multiple buds or blooms. Uh, so. Daylilies. Daylilies can yeah. take the heat, although they need a little more water than some yep. of the heat And tolerant. cannas. Cannas. Are, yeah, are good and there's choice. all there's every variety from, you know, 18 inches, two inch, uh, two feet mm -hmm. tall to up to the foot. six footers. Yeah. And uh, but they do take uh, mm -hmm. they they like water from down below, mm -hmm. which brings us to uh, uh, something. It is on all of these plants. Uh, all these heat tolerant plants are going to take the summer better if you have a lot of carbon in your soil to begin with. So you got good, rich soil that will retain moisture, and then where you have one or two inches of a natural underlying natural <laughs> mulch mm -hmm. on top of the ground right. to keep the ground from getting so hot. You know, and keep to that moisture in. Hold that moisture yeah. in longer. Uh, it keeps the roots cooler. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the above. Uh, you know, even the desert plants will appreciate mm -hmm. that. Even a yucca that's mulched will do better yeah. than a yucca that's not. So, and you do see a lot of yuccas just in the rock, and they handle yeah. it. But you know, it doesn't hurt to have some. And mulch most on of it. these plants like they don't like to necessarily be watered every day, every day, mm -hmm. every day. A light water. They like with the, when they're dry to be drenched and soaked to a good deep, weekly deep, deep watering, watering right. and then let them, because what happens is the roots, with if, when you, you spread out your watering, the roots start chasing the water. Mm -hmm. As the water is draining away and going lower and lower in the soil bed, the roots are chasing after that right. moisture. But they're not coming to the surface. So Right, so you have a more extended root system. When mm -hmm. you water every single day, they're just laying up near the top, and they're like, feed me, feed me. <laughs> Get me more you know, water. So they're lazy roots, and yeah. then you, you go away for two days on a trip, and you come back, and everything's going to lay in there with its head down. Because you didn't water it. Because, right, yeah. because you didn't water it. It's used to being watered every day. Yeah. So keep that in mind also. Train your plants to be uh, learn how to stand on their own yeah. two feet. Well, that's the other problem we have right now is because we had so much rain in the spring. These plants are so used to all this moisture. Yep. And now that, you know, the turn, the faucet's turned off. Yep. And uh, you are going to have to start watering. Yep. And, and they're used to all that, that nice spring rain. So it may be a little uh, challenging in August to, to keep our plants looking as good as they were looking. So because... Um, it's it was um, pretty pretty wet spring it and was summer. A very wet. Very wet. I hadn't turned my my water system on until about a couple of weeks ago, about I a know. week ago. Yeah, that was so, same at my plant. Yeah. I didn't I didn't crank. You didn't it have up. to water. I didn't crank it up till yeah. it was almost July. Yeah. So, but August is the month when we water, water, water. So, but annuals. Um, we'll talk about annuals. Things to do in your garden. Um, the annuals. Um, some of them need to be deadheaded. And, yep. you know, um, so they don't get leggy. Well, if you like, and you fertilize if you them. like flowers, uh, the more you deadhead, the more flowers mm -hmm. you're going to have. Right. And with all the rain we've had, the pots, you know, have been drenched, and, and they need a lot of fertilizer because that, that rain just washes yeah. that nutrients yeah. out. So you have to, you know, yeah, my potted fertilizer. Plants, I, I give them a pinch every week. Mm -hmm. They get their Sunday tree to give yeah, them a little, a little pinch every Sunday. Yeah. And then on your herbs, you can use your herbs for your uh, vinegars, make your flavored oils and vinegars. And then, of course, if you have basil, yep. you can make pesto. So, you know, I have a lot of basil. A lot of basil. <laughs> I have a lot of basil. So, and perennials, um, the mums, have you been deadheading your mums? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And uh, a lot of people deadhead the mums till like mid July. Mm -hmm. And then they'll have a nice big bloom in the fall. Yeah, if you but keep them some people back. will just let them bloom. Then after they bloom, they cut them off, and then they have a little later fall bloom. Yeah. And I've done it both ways, but um, I usually do trim them and yeah. uh, get the blooms, you know, yeah. trimmed until July. Yeah, until about yeah, July the fourth. July the yeah. well, fourth, yeah. fourth to the fifteenth, yeah. first first couple yeah. weeks of July. So, um, and then lawns, you have uh, an extensive lawns, and I have lawns, yeah. and um, a lot of people don't have lawns, but. Uh, if you do have them, you have to water deep. Yep. At least. Yeah. Generally, uh, you know, um, t 
turf grasses require an inch a week mm -hmm. uh, to uh, stay healthy. Right. And one way to know what an inch is is just get yourself an, an old tuna fish can and set it between the soil. No matter what your, your watering system is, what automatic hand, whatever, from, but from the water source to the far end of its range, you set the tuna can at the halfway mark and when you start the water, you look at your watch, and when the can is full, you look at it, and now you know that that particular sprinkler in that particular spot takes 35 minutes to equal to one, one inch, inch or yeah. whatever the time and may it be. It could be an hour. And then depending. you don't need the tuna can because now you know mm -hmm. uh, what, what, how long it takes to get uh, the right. equivalent of a one inch rainfall. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing. The other thing I'd mention is, is and I see a lot of this, uh, people mowing their lawns way too low. Mm -hmm. There is not a turf sp uh, specialist at any major university in America well, that will tell you to cut your grass short. There, unless you're on a gra you green need to be of a two and golf and a half course. Inches and higher, unless, <laughs> right, that's tiff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, unless you're putting on your front mm -hmm. lawn. Uh, and that's a whole different story. Yeah. If they, people knew how much work that took to keep <laughs> that and the expense. Yeah. Uh, but uh, at this time of year, you need to be at three and a half inches mm -hmm. in and around. Three and a quarter, three and three quarters. Well, it keeps the roots cool, in too. In that range. Yeah. It keeps the ground cooler. Uh, it, you know, Smothers holds weeds. the moisture yeah. in, uh, suppresses weeds. Mm -hmm. uh, they just have more photosynthesis. Yeah. Uh, and usually the more, the higher the, 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 the blade of the grass is, the deeper the root mm -hmm. is also. Mm -hmm. So a lot of reasons. Uh, so it's, uh, if you haven't raised that mower, mm -hmm. you need to raise it. And the other thing, think about it. If you've got an older watering system, you know, the sprinkler heads, mm -hmm. uh, ir irrigation system, you might think about changing your sprinkler heads because if our water system is 22 years old. Yeah. And some of our sprinkler heads, they've improved the uh, the pop-up heads so much more yeah. than when we had ours in. So yeah. think about, you might have to change those sprinkler heads and get a, yeah, a more efficient sprinkler head yeah. for your lawn. So. Especially the long-range heads. Right. The long-range heads had a habit of making an arc. Mm -hmm. And you get and, a lot of water they, at the and edge. It, and you had water on both ends, mm -hmm. but at the center. Yeah. But the, the new big heads, the mm -hmm. long-range heads, you get a more even right. water coverage now. Right. So makes a difference. Uh, you know, uh, that would be a word to the wise right. also. Yeah. Um, now, roses, I haven't seen too many uh, Japanese beetles this year. I don't no. know, other people may have seen them, but no. I haven't Fewer seen them. Fewer beetles and they're smaller. Well, I haven't noticed the size. Yeah. I've only seen two, so um, I haven't seen very many. Well, I, so. get, I get up close and personal Do with you? them. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, uh, <laughs> but you have to watch for your yeah, aphids yeah, and, you, you know, know, treat the fungus problems. So, um, you know, just keep on top of those those situations so and the trees and shrubs just have to scale uh, check for scale and and bagworms I oh there is one other thing there is one other little little creature that's about to show up oh, so if you have asparagus parsley tomatoes moonflowers anything in the night family of uh -huh. plants this is the time of year when the sphinx moth oh. comes in the middle of the night and lays a little egg and the little egg hatches very quickly and it starts eating, and it seems like that quick overnight, you've got this big green thing that's about the size of your index finger. Oh, and, yeah. Okay, and it is eating Lee. It'll take down a plant overnight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you got to start those plants. You need to keep an eye on them mm -hmm. because you may go out and not have the plant anymore. Right. You they know? they can devastate so, a plant pretty quickly. You know, you yeah. Just just, uh, just pick them off and mm -hmm. get rid of them. Mm -hmm. So you hate to kill a moth, but some some things have to be yep. eliminated. Yep. So okay, so trees well, and shrubs, just check well, those. And I haven't seen too many of the bagworms on no. the trees this year. I think I only no. saw one. Yeah. Uh, so those are easy to, to handle if you just break the 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 sack open, and the wasps will come and take care of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, they do, yeah. Yep. If you have webworms, all you yeah. have to do is open the web with mm -hmm. some kind of a tool. Yeah. A long pole. I've got a super long, uh, multi-section bamboo pole. And I just 
reach up in the tree and just mm -hmm. rip the just rip the webbing a little mm -hmm. bit, and the wasp will do the rest of the work right. for you. Yeah. Or a very strong stream of water mm -hmm. will do it too. Anything to cut that break that web yeah. open. Yeah. Uh, so. Also on the pest list, one other thing I'll just mention very quickly if I can. Uh, if, you, if anybody has noticed all the uh, uh, the white oak trees all over Bella Vista mm -hmm. with the damage done from mm -hmm. the galls, you know, uh, and the tree looks like it's going to die and it's been that jumping gall, mm -hmm. you know, that's caused the problem. But I've noticed in the last few days those affected trees are putting out new growth now. Oh, are they? Yeah. Okay. So I think what happened, Jerry, is that we had so much rain this mm -hmm. spring that little wasp, it's a non-stinging wasp, it came and laid its galls under the leaves, mm -hmm. and then the rain just continued. So she ran back and she laid some more. more. Eggs. She laid more, mm -hmm. you know, and it continued to rain. She came back until finally the leaf was so covered in those galls, right. you know, it that they the all leaf. turned brown and, mm -hmm. and it, you know, and it affected the leaf. So it looked, you look at the tree and you think the tree's going to die because mm -hmm. people were calling me like crazy on that thing. And... We told everybody, I talked to David Rains mm -hmm. and I talked to the extension agent too, and they said, don't worry about it. Well, they were right because mm -hmm. if you look around now in those trees, you'll see new little growth little starting to emerge and she's not laying eggs yeah. anymore. Don't give up on them too quickly. So, yeah, yeah don't, don't be yeah. cutting them down because yeah. they're going to be fine. Yeah. So anyway, well, you know, keep think, track of those things in, the, in your garden. And the Bella Vista Garden Club starts its new year, and this time we're meeting in August for the first time. Instead of September, it's going to be August 28th, and uh, we've got a new time also. We're going to be meeting earlier, we're going to be meeting at 9.30 with coffee and pastries, and then um, the meeting start at 10. It's at the Bella Vista Community Church, yep. and um, guests are always welcome. We always welcome yep. guests. So for more information, you can go to the Bella Vista website, bellavistagardenclub.com. So thank you, Tony, for coming yeah, today and yeah. sharing always, all your always information. Pleasure. Yeah, and it's fun. About heat trial and plants so and I hope you've enjoyed the show and will join us next month and until then don't forget to stop and smell the roses and feed the birds and feed the birds <laughs> and the butterflies and the butterflies